Uh, hello, everybody out there. Uh, my name is Patrick Deshanes. I am the Director for Community and Economic Development for the Town of Walpole. Uh, I want to thank everyone for being here, as well as people who will watch um, this recording at home. This is a community forum that we're having to discuss the ongoing local rapid recovery planning program that the town of Walpole, as well as the nonprofit destination downtown, uh, was awarded in late 2020, early 21. Uh, this program is an excellent opportunity that the town and destination downtown have gotten into to take a closer look at a, a commercial center, particularly the downtown of Walpole. Um, to kind of observe what were the ramifications and the impacts of COVID-19 on the local economy, as well as look into what possible um, short-term as well as long-term improvements could be utilized both within the downtown um, and the town overall. So this is it's a great opportunity to kind of learn about what we have and, and what we learned from, from COVID-19, but also what to take um, from that and to move forward and to um, uh, prove. Um, this tastes great, Mary. This is Maria. Oops, sorry. Hi, Maria. Sorry, can we just everyone mute until. Uh... All right. So, without further ado, I'm just going to turn over to Sarah Katib from Destination Downtown just to kind of um, introduce her, her, um, her group. Thank you, sweetheart. Oh, thanks, Pat. Just like to say again, if, if everyone could mute, please, until we get to the discussion portion. Um, so hi, everyone. My name is Sarah Khatib. I'm the president and founder of Destination Downtown. And um, I also want to thank you all for joining us here um, tonight, Thursday night, and to everyone who's, uh, who's watching it later. Um, Destination Downtown is made up in a, of an amazing group of business leaders, of community leaders in Walpole, um, and we are a nonprofit focused on revitalizing downtown Walpole. We're following the Main Street America approach to revitalization. And really we, we see ourselves as a, as a bridge between the community and businesses and town hall. So as I said, we're focused on revitalizing downtown. We want to bring new life to downtown. Um, we wanna bring community events and make improvements in the physical space. So there's a couple of things that we've, we've done so far. We've uh, commissioned um, an artist rendering of a map. So we have a downtown map, a cartoon map, and that's really fun. You should check it out if you haven't seen it already. Um, we organized an art and music festival in the uh, downtown and town common last fall. And we hope to do the second annual art and music festival um, this, this fall again. You never did that. During the summer, um, we organized um, a window painting event downtown, Bear of a Summer, which was really cute. And uh, we organized a community event where the community put up lights on the town common, um, holiday lights during the um, holiday season. And most recently we've been doing business spotlights of various businesses around uh, Walpole and mostly downtown Walpole. So um, I was playing a little bit of one earlier. If, if you came early, you saw a little bit of that, um, but do check that out on, you can find it on YouTube through Walpole Media. So tonight we're gonna talk about the rapid recovery plan, which is uh, just a, a great opportunity from the state. And it's an opportunity for downtown businesses um, to receive technical assistance in their recovery from COVID and also looking at their like long-term growth. And it's also just a, a really amazing opportunity for the town and for our organization, Destination Downtown, um, you know, to, to look at those long-term growth opportunities, to look at the physical space. And uh, two things that I wanna highlight is it gives us a chance to evaluate our central business district zoning uh, and see how that is, uh, you know, how, how we can use that to prepare for long-term growth. And it also gives us a chance to improve the walkability and, um, you know, the public spaces downtown. So again, I thank everyone for joining us. And at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to Phil Schaefing and he is uh, the plan facilitator for Walpole. And he's gonna go through the plan and uh, seek your input. 
All right, go ahead, Phil, thanks. Great, thank you very much. Uh, welcome everyone and thank you very much for being here tonight. We really appreciate it. Uh, my name is Phil Schaefing. I am an urban designer and planner with Stantec. We're an engineering, architecture, and design firm that is serving as the plan facilitator, as Sarah mentioned, uh, for this local rapid recovery planning process. Um, and so tonight, what I'd like to do is provide a little bit more background, build on what Pat and Sarah shared about this um, program, which is across the, state, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Um, talk a little bit about what we have found out so far through our diagnostic of downtown. We um, you know, visited, we walked around, took a look at a um, variety of physical characteristics of the downtown, um, looked at some data in terms of customer and residents uh, in the area. And then we'll talk a little bit about the, uh, the initial priorities for this, this process. And we, and we do want to have some time at the end to hear from you as well. So as you're um, listening to this, please you know, note any questions you have. Um, we'll look forward to hearing from you uh, later on in the evening. So as was explained, um, this meeting tonight is about a grant that Walpole received through the Rapid Recovery Plan Program, uh, which is being offered at the state level by the Massachusetts Department of Housing and Community Development. And it is, was made available to any town or city throughout the Commonwealth. And the goal of this is to focus on downtown areas um, in communities larger and smaller than Walpole, uh, to develop an actionable project-based recovery plan um, to overcome some of the impacts of COVID, but also to help address some of the longer term issues and challenges that downtown areas have been dealing with. Uh, and so it is, there is certainly a, a, a specific COVID recovery focus for local businesses, but it's also, as we'll talk more about, um, looking at other physical changes to the downtown that can help make them a, a more inviting, welcoming place for businesses and for the community. So um, Walpole is one of 120 communities across Massachusetts that are participating, um, ranging you know, from small towns on the South Shore like Hanson, all the way up to Worcester and, and other communities. And so it really spans uh, the range of types of communities and it's a chance for uh, these downtown areas to also learn from each other as well, hear about shared challenges, shared opportunities, hear what other places are doing uh, to move forward in this time. So Sarah mentioned that we're focused on the central business district in downtown. And so that's what you see up on the screen here. Uh, focused on Main Street, you know, both sides from sort of the common uh, up to the, the CBS Main Street Shopping Center. Uh, includes the commuter rail station, the two new apartment buildings that have opened up recently, um, and all of the businesses that are in that area. So our recommendations that will develop in the course of this process will focus on that area, but certainly may have applicability to other parts of the town as well. This is where we're at in terms of our overall planning schedule. Um, this is a pretty quick moving process. We are wrapping up the first phase, which is kind of the data collection phase. Uh, we held some stakeholder interviews. There was a business survey that was available for business owners in the district. Um, I mentioned that we were, you know, we walked around downtown to kind of get a sense of what was working well, what, uh, what are areas for improvement. And with all of these findings that we'll talk about tonight, we're gonna to start moving into the second phase, which is when we'll start to develop specific project recommendations. So, you know, right now we have some initial ideas about what our priorities are, and that's part of what we wanna hear from you tonight is whether these are the right priorities or if there are other things we should also be considering. And that will then feed into these project recommendations. Uh, and then the ultimate goal of this is to have a draft plan available by late summer and the final plan submitted to DHCD uh, by mid-September. And when we get to the, the project recommendation phase, we're going to be looking at six main areas. Um, first to public realm, which is focused on things like streets and sidewalks, street lighting, trees, uh, transportation, infrastructure, that sort of, of thing in the, the CBD private realm, which is focused on the individual buildings and with a real focus on kind of storefronts, storefront design, lighting, maintenance, um, but also on the overall building condition itself. 
There are two categories that are really targeted specifically at local businesses, and that's the revenue and sales and tenant mix. So that could be recommendations like support for businesses to build an online uh, marketing platform or ways to better understand their customers or you know, a broader program across the central business district to sort of recruit and retain particular businesses that sort of complement one another and, and help create a vibrant downtown. And the other two categories are administrative capacity, and that's where the zoning that Sarah mentioned would fall, um, as well as permitting processes and things like that. And then finally, cultural and arts. So ways that public art and cultural events can help attract people to come downtown, give them reasons to visit multiple times, and just generally add a sense of life and energy and excitement downtown. This process is building on a lot of work that has already happened over the past several years. You see some of those mentioned here. Uh, and so we're you know, looking at these different documents, understanding what's come before, uh, so we can kind of build on that and, and to move forward, um, take the, the good things that have been working uh, and keep advancing them and identify new ideas in response to the pandemic in this last year. So as part of the application process that Destination Downtown completed late last year, they were asked to um, identify their initial priorities, both a set of short-term priorities and medium to long-term priorities. And so you see those here on the screen and it kind of runs the range from you know, support for small businesses, um, for online platforms and you know, a mobile app for downtown wayfinding to help people know, you know what businesses are located where, uh, to physical improvements like pedestrian improvements, signage and facade, uh, and then the zoning again is a priority. So these, you know, keep in mind as you see this next uh, set of information in terms of kind of what our initial findings are, uh, and then we'll want to hear from you at the end of this to see, you know, based on what you've heard tonight, are these still the right priorities? Are there other things we should consider? Um, so we look forward to hearing about that. Um, again, it's kind of just what we'll be, we'll be covering uh, in the next uh, short bit of time here. So this, uh, you know, is, I think, a great picture of downtown that shows, you know, one of the ways the downtown community has responded during the pandemic, and that's by creating more opportunities for outdoor dining. And we'll talk a little bit about, you know, why that's important and also some of the, the medium and long-term uh, possibilities there are to kind of continue that, that offering here. So one of the first things we did is start a, a diagnostic and evaluation of the Main Street business environment, looking in these four categories here. And the first two categories, um, DHCD gave us sort of a set of kind of grading principles or you know, metrics for different uh, elements of downtown. And so you'll see a, a series of slides that are kind of formatted like this. So um, in the top right, the business survey that I mentioned, if there was a relevant question there, you'll see you know, roughly how respondents rated uh, that particular element. And then down at the bottom are the list of metrics that uh, we were using that DHCD provided to help assign a letter grade for the downtown. And we will be the first to admit that this is more art than science, um, but it's, it's trying to give kind of an honest assessment of where uh, downtown is in these different uh, categories. It helps to identify you know, what's working well and where are the opportunities for improvement. So the first, uh, looking at the physical realm and in particular, the public realm, the streets, sidewalks, roadways, things like that. Some of the key takeaways we found from this, um, building on some of the, the evaluation work that the town and destination downtown has done. Uh, the first is the importance of pedestrian improvements in a couple of key corridors, whether that's between the train station and Main Street or between the public parking areas back behind buildings on Main Street and the Main Street sidewalk. There are opportunities to make those more interesting, inviting walks, um, improve them to make them feel safe throughout you know, the day and throughout the year. Uh, part of that is also a wayfinding system to be able to understand you know, where are the businesses that you're looking for and also to discover new businesses that are downtown. And then finally, the importance of sort of managing parking. Um, you know, curbside spaces in particular are very valuable for businesses and 
trying to optimize the use of those for customers and not for commuter parkers or long-term employee parking, um, thinking about that signage and wayfinding to the, the public parking lots in the rear. You know, those are things that can help support local businesses. So one of the first elements we looked at was sidewalks, looking for you know, an environment that really supports pedestrian activity, can support dining and retail display and that sort of activity. And as we walked around and took a look at the, the guidance that DHCD provided, we assessed it as about a B. Um, you know, there are sidewalks throughout the downtown environment. They're in pretty good condition for the most part, uh, but in a lot of areas, they are fairly narrow for the types of use that you would like to see on a downtown sidewalk. So that makes it a little different. There are, you know, photo on the right there, there are also um, parts a little bit outside of the main street core where the sidewalk's very close to the street and as a pedestrian that doesn't always feel very comfortable. So, you know, we assess this as, as a B, you know, pretty good, but room for opportun uh, opportunity for improvement. Part of that then is the presence of street trees and benches. It's part of what you know, kind of adds character to the district, opportunities to rest, shade in the summer, uh, color in the fall, things like that. Um, and we assessed downtown Walpole at a C for that. And that's really closely related to just the width of the sidewalk and the available space there. Um, there isn't a lot of space to add trees and benches and things like that today. Um, but one of the prior, you know, potential priorities that we'll be looking at are other ways that we might look to provide benches and trees and wider sidewalks in certain parts of the downtown. Lighting was a third public realm element. This is primarily looking at street lighting and, and really focusing on how it serves people who are walking around the downtown. And with that metric in mind, we assess it as, as a C because most of the lighting downtown are the taller poles that you see on the left and right here that are really you know, meant to light up the roadway for drivers. And they do provide some light on the sidewalk, but not as much as the type of lights that you see in the common in that center photo, the shorter lights that are really meant to illuminate the sidewalk. And so um, that was where we came up with the, the C evaluation. And then wayfinding and signage, this again is just to help people kind of orient themselves, understand, you know, where is parking, where are the shops at, where are different restaurants. Uh, and so we assess that here as a C. While there is some signage, um, a lot of it is what you see on the right, kind of geared towards drivers on Main Street. Um, there's some directional signage to, to parking in particular, like you see on the left, uh, some of the banners that advertise businesses, which are great. Um, but, you know, they don't really tell you, are you close to the restaurant? Is it ahead of you, behind you? Um, so this is, again, where a wayfinding system would really help that. And finally, in public realm, looking at roadway and crosswalks, uh, we assessed it as a B. Uh, the town has invested uh, a lot in infrastructure downtown in recent years. Uh, the roadways are in pretty good condition overall. There are crosswalks at most major intersections. Uh, you see more recent improvements like these flashing pedestrian beacons near uh, the Union and West apartment complex and the train station. Uh, but there are also areas where you know, streets have recently been dug up for utilities and improvements are needed there. As we shift now to looking at private realm, um, a couple of our key takeaways here. Uh, biggest one really is looking at storefront signage and uh, you know, appreciating that it's really difficult for pedestrians to see the types of businesses and stores that are ahead of them on the sidewalk. It's easy to look across the street and see businesses because of the way the signs are uh, oriented up against the building, but there's very few signs that actually hang over the sidewalk and tell you what are you approaching, do you want to keep walking down this block or not. Um, and so that was one of the, the key things that we noticed. Uh, also just the ground floor design of sort of the storefronts and how they're maintained. You know, there's opportunities for improvement with, you know, awnings and building and storefront lighting, things like that. Uh, again, to really create a, a welcoming business environment in downtown. And then finally, the, the need and the opportunity for more outdoor dining, more outdoor retail display that's, you know, tied in part to the regulatory uh, environment. But you know, outdoor dining is a great way to show that people are downtown and they're enjoying themselves, enjoying the community. Um, and seeing people is a great way to attract more people to the downtown. And so that's, that's really an important part of it. 
So going through a couple of the particular elements that we created, looking at storefront windows, uh, one of the key things here is, is you want, you know, transparent storefront windows that you can see, you know, what's on sale inside, what does the store look like, do you want to, you know, something to pique your curiosity and, and draw you in. Uh, we assess this overall as a C for the district. There are, you know, some good storefront examples, but there's also a number where, um, you, you know, you either have businesses that don't really need a storefront presence or where the storefront windows are, you know, cluttered with advertising and temporary signs and things like that. Um, or, you know, windows where the glass isn't necessarily clear, it might be tinted a darker color. And so it's harder to see outside and, and these sorts of things, you know, make it just a little bit harder for those uh, businesses to feel as welcoming and inviting as they could. Outdoor dining and display, you know, I've already talked about that. Um, installations like this in, in other towns and cities were quite popular during the pandemic and continue to be. Um, the Shared Streets and Spaces grant that Walpole received last year helped to uh, install some of the barriers you see on the left there um, to allow outdoor dining by those restaurants while still maintaining a clear path for pedestrians uh, walking along the sidewalk. But overall, we assess this as a C because a lot of the outdoor dining opportunities that currently are in downtown are on, you know, private property, um, you know, buildings that happen to have, you know, a little front yard like a uh, farmer in the Dell there or on a corner location. Um, and as you see in the picture on the right, a lot of the sidewalks on Main Street, you just don't have room to put cafe seating today. Uh, looking at storefront signage then was the next element we took a look at. And this is, is what I was talking about. On the left, you see those, um, they're called facade signs that are against the building, which are great if you're, you're driving by or if you're on the other side of the street. But you can imagine if you're standing, you know, underneath that Bank of America sign looking ahead of you, you don't have, a, you don't have signs that are hanging over the sidewalk telling you what's up ahead. And so the example on the right is, is kind of a unique example because the building is set far enough back from the sidewalk to have a sign of that size. But that idea of signage that overhangs the sidewalk and tells you what's coming up ahead can help create a more welcoming environment and encourage people to explore ahead a little bit. Storefront awnings was another element we were asked to take a look at. Um, this is you know, about providing shade and branding for businesses. Uh, and just you know, visual interest in general, different colored awnings, things like that. Uh, we assess downtown Walpole today as sort of a C. There are a few storefronts that have you know relatively simple awnings, but a lot of storefronts that, that don't have any any awnings at all. And so you know that's an opportunity where we could you know take a look at the regulations, what's allowed today, are there changes needed to help you know facilitate that sort of thing? Are there storefront design principles that could help? instruct people with that. Uh, but that's an opportunity, again, to just create a more kind of pedestrian friendly, um, welcoming downtown environment. Looking at, you know, building facades, storefront facades, this is, you know, primarily about kind of maintenance and, and condition. Uh, we assess downtown overall as a B. You know, there are examples of pretty well maintained buildings downtown, but, um, you know, variety of styles from, you know, more traditional brick ones to more contemporary styles. Um, but there are a couple of buildings that have not been as well maintained that are, are vacant today, including some in some pretty visible locations. And so, you know, those are opportunities for improvement that can help to, you know, demonstrate investment in the downtown improvement helps, you know, convey a sense of energy and change and optimism. And so, you know, those are things to certainly consider moving forward. And then finally, lighting um, in this category, this is now looking specifically at kind of building and storefront lighting. Um, and we assess the overall downtown environment as a B. Um, you know, several examples of lighting that's illuminating those facade signs. Um, there on the right, you see some more kind of decorative string lighting, things like that. Um, so it, definitely some good examples, some opportunities to expand that to other storefronts and businesses. Um, but there are some good examples there as well. So that was kind of our physical realm assessment. I'm going to move through this next section a little quicker. Um, this is looking at kind of characteristics of the customer base. Um, a, couple, a couple of the key takeaways here is that downtown definitely has a growing population, particularly with those 
two recently opened apartment projects. And as more people start to move in, get more comfortable, you know, moving around again, coming out of, of the pandemic, you know, that's just going to increase the population of people who are living in downtown and hopefully, you know, therefore going out to shop and to eat downtown after work and on the weekends. Um, and we also identified, you know, the business mix that's downtown and the hours that the businesses are open. It was an opportunity for improvement to expand the hours of operations as the customer base kind of grows. Um, more businesses that have a real storefront presence to make it a more interesting place to walk around. Those are things that can help to support the local businesses downtown. So the next couple of slides, we wanted to compare the central business district to a couple of, of other areas of what we're calling the local market, which is about a one and a half mile driving distance. And that's where you see that kind of funky yellow shape there. And then the town of Walpole overall and the state of Massachusetts just as sort of a, a comparison point. Uh, so looking at population trends, this chart is showing growth since 2010. Uh, the central business district you see there has a very rapid <laughs> increase in percentage there. And that's really a function of just having a fairly small population in 2010. So while the percentage growth is big, the number of people living downtown uh, is not necessarily a, a huge number. We'll come back to that population projection there of plus 58. Um, the data on these next couple of slides is from uh, Esri Business Analyst, which provides, um, you know, collects census data and other data points and then makes projections based on those. But knowing what we do about, you know, these projects that are just opening up in downtown, you know, that's data that's not captured in this, you know, this sort of a year or two behind those types of projects. So we look at the age distribution of the downtown population. Uh, it does skew a little bit older than the town overall. And again, this is something that will likely change as those apartment buildings open up. Um, a lot of the residents who will be moving there, um, probably, you know, younger professionals, but also certainly some, you know, uh, retirees or, or others who just don't want to deal with house upkeep and things like that. But we would expect to see that median age kind of drop over time. And that informs, you know, the types of businesses and the offerings they, they have um, as well. So that's an important part of their kind of customer base. Looking at race and ethnicity downtown um, in general, both the, the downtown area and the town of Walpole are slightly less diverse than the state overall. Uh, education levels a bit higher than the state overall. So pretty well educated, you know, downtown and you know, general town wide population. And as we look ahead at you know population growth, uh, you know, I mentioned that again, it's kind of from a, a small base, um, but the average household size there that you know is indicating that most of the residents who live there are singles and couples. There aren't a lot of of kids living downtown, which is not you know too surprising. Um, but as we look ahead to some of that recent housing growth that I mentioned, that'll be increasing the population as they, you know, fully lease up over time. Um, you know, Liberty Station, Union and West, um, you know, almost 350 new units opening up downtown, which will take a while to lease up. But, you know, more and more people are still interested in walkable destinations, walkable downtowns, particularly being so close to the commuter rail. Um, you know, while office culture has certainly changed, you know, it's likely that a lot of people will still need to go into the office at least a few days a week. And so not needing your car necessarily to do that will, will be a great draw for these places. And again, you know, the more residents living downtown, you have more people out on the streets in the evenings and the weekends, more people supporting local businesses. And that's, you know, a real benefit to the businesses downtown. As we look at jobs and housing, you know, their downtown does have a pretty sizable employment base for its size, you know, over at least 500 uh, employees, according to the, the Esri Business Analyst data. Um, and so that's providing a population for weekday mornings and, and lunch times. Uh, and again, it's just adding life at different times of day as well. Um, these are just uh, things primarily for kind of local business owners to sort of understand, you know, what some other characteristics of the downtown. Um, so I won't dwell too much on this. Uh, the one thing I will note, the unemployment 
uh, rate that is there is from sort of the middle of last year. So that's kind of peak pandemic. And as you'll see in gray below there that the most recent data, um, that number that rate has dropped significantly. Uh, city of War, town of Walpole uh, is at 5.1% unemployment in, 20, in April uh, compared to Massachusetts at 5.9%. And then finally, in this section, uh, business survey, this was uh, available to downtown business owners and managers uh, throughout the month of April. And we received 19 survey responses from that. Uh, so not necessarily a huge turnout, but a, a very helpful representative sample nonetheless. Um, some of the top impacts you know, during COVID, not surprising, some of the biggest ones, you know, less uh, operating app, fewer operating hours, less capacity, decline in revenue. Um, you know, 69% of businesses generated less revenue last year than they did before. And so these are some of the type of local business impacts that, um, you know, this program is hoping to kind of grapple with, find ways to build their sales back quickly as we're coming out of this to help make up for some of that um, and help them to be stronger going forward. Um, just a few more slides left in this section. Uh, total number of businesses downtown, you know, pretty robust for the size, you know, around 120 um, of the number of vacant storefronts there. You know, several of those are in the, the new projects that just opened up. So those spaces are still leasing up. Um, a couple others on Main Street and then close to the back sort of behind the CVS shopping center. Um, there's a building that had a, a couple of businesses that were about to open up and then the pandemic hit. And so those have been empty since then as well. Here you see kind of the breakdown of the types of businesses. So, you know, oriented um, number of, of services, professional, scientific, technical. So those are tend to be more office type uses that don't necessarily have or need a storefront presence. Um, but things like retail, obviously, are the sort of shops that you would think of in a traditional downtown. And finally, with administrative capacity, you know, Sarah talked a little bit about Destination Downtown, their organization and their mission, what they're doing. Um, so they're kind of the, the steward for downtown and the, the cheerleader and the, the organization that is you know, promoting the businesses um, and helping to bring grants like this to Walpole to help them out. Uh, and this is just the uh, the map that Sarah mentioned that they had the artist commission um, that they are you know have been distributing to local businesses. They're hoping to get out to hotels as well in the area. Um, so something like this that helps people you know appreciate what's downtown. And the, this graphic doesn't show it, but there's a, a key that lists all of the businesses downtown. So you can take a look at that, find the restaurants, find the you know business that you're looking for, uh, and be able to to come downtown to patronize that. So with that, I want to pause for a moment. That was a lot of information. Um, and wanna open it up for questions, uh, either about any of the, the data that you saw, but also um, what I'm really interested to hear is a sense of, you know, what do you see as some of the biggest challenges facing downtown today? And it could be as a result of the pandemic, or it could be, you know, a, a longer term issue that you would love to see addressed. Uh, you know, where we're at right now in the process, we're trying to make sure that we have a, a pretty good sense of, you know, what those needs are. And so it would be really helpful to hear from you, from your experience, from, you know, how you use downtown or maybe don't use downtown. Um, you know, what are some of the challenges? What are some of the needs? So. Um, we'll take, you know, maybe 10 or, or so minutes to kind of discuss that. So um, I will turn it over. You can either use the chat box to enter questions um, or you can unmute yourself. So we have one, uh, one question that just came in on the chat. Um, mm -hmm. what, what do we do with some of the vacant slash in transition buildings in important locations? The old town hall, old Bank of America building. Mm -hmm. Those are uh, two, you know, particularly the old town hall, you know, is a very prominent building and the old Bank of America building is right there at the corner of the, the common as well. Um, and so that, that is a question of what to do while they're empty. The, the Bank of America building, because of, of where it is on Main Street, you know, with the windows there, um, other towns and cities have had um, public art 
programs where they will solicit local artists to do essentially kind of storefront displays and they you know they need to get permission from that that building owner but then use those empty windows to you know display the local art or there could be a, a theme or something and so you know that is one way to at least provide some visual interest while you know you're trying to figure out what to do with that building um the town hall building is harder just because it, it's sort of set back from the street and really is just a, a grand old building by itself. Um, really, the biggest thing is just to, you know, try to keep it from deteriorating any further. And that's that's a challenge with any old building that isn't used for a while. And it just it starts to wear and to age differently. And that just makes it harder and harder to find a, a, a viable, financially feasible reuse for it in the long term. Um, you know, temporary, you know, events and programming on the lawn, things like that can at least bring a little bit of life to it. But, you know, those those bigger, you know, empty buildings are, are certainly challenges to address. And I would I would say also as we improve the the entire district as we as we improve the physical space as we make downtown more walkable that's that's going to attract businesses to that want to come in because businesses are really especially if they're going to be in a central you know business district they want it to be walkable they want you know their customers to be able to to see them from down the street they want you know the downtown to be lively to for there to be events downtown. So I think as we make improvements in the entire district, we will see you know, some of those vacant storefronts get occupied. So I, uh, I have a question that was sent to me um, mm -hmm. regarding uh, setbacks and specifically, I know we have the, I think you actually pointed out in one of your slides, the building on the corner of Main and East Street with the, uh, the car stereo mm -hmm. uh, lot. Um, obviously, you know, the building itself looks like it needs, you know, it is, it is a privately owned building, looks like it needs a, a, some work, um, you know, setback. So is there anything different that could be done there in terms of zoning or anything like that? Well, with existing buildings like that, changing the zoning won't force a building owner to do something different. Um, but with, you know, setbacks like that, with, you know, different uses, you know, it's currently, I think, used as a car, you know, maintenance repair shop. Um, but you actually see other examples just right in downtown where that sort of corner space, in fact, just across the street, there's a corner setback that's actually turned into a, a seating area. And so, you know, while you want buildings along Main Street, you know, close to the sidewalk so you can see the storefronts and things like that, uh, corners and places like that do provide opportunities where you might use that space for something different, whether it's outdoor dining, you know, plaza space, you know, patio space for the business, um, you know, landscaping, attractive landscaping, things like that. So that there are some other, you know, sort of design approaches or use approaches, depending on what happens with, with the building itself um, in that particular location. And Phil, we have um, two more questions that I see in the chat. Mm -hmm. So first one, is there a physical way to bring the outer lying businesses, for example, flowers and more nappers and tandies or napper tandies to make them feel more of a part of downtown? Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a great question. And one of both the sort of the strengths and the challenges in downtown is and the fact that they're on the other side of the common, that, that feels like kind of the natural start or end point of downtown because it is the, you know, that community space and it's where you have a couple of major roads coming together. So getting across that, you know, if you're on one or the other side of the common, to get across that just mentally is, is kind of a barrier. Um, so I think physically, you know, there are things like extending, um, you know, if there is a sort of a very distinct design of the sidewalk and the streetscape. So that could be the, the style of the lamps, the types of plantings, um, just signage, street signage in general. You know, if there's sort of a, an image of downtown that's in the core of Main Street, if that's carried across the common and further down Main Street, that's one way to make it feel like sort of a continue, physical continuation of the corridor. Uh, but then the other important thing is the, the signage and the wayfinding you know, to help people who, 
you know, are in that part of Main Street, you know, on the, the opposite side from Nabertandes and Christ to have them be able to look at a sign and see, oh, it's a three minute walk ahead and there's a couple more restaurants up there. That type of, of information being easily available, uh, you know, convenient to, to find and to use will also help you know, people make that walk. They're not going to walk there if they don't know what's up ahead, but if there's signage that can inform them, that can really play an important role too. Okay, and then, um, oh, um, I have a question uh, from the audience I see. Do you wanna take that one or take the question from the chat first? Um, let's do the question from the audience and then we'll come back to the chat. Okay, um, flowers and more? Go ahead, you can unmute yourself. Uh, yes, I just wanted to go over as well. I've been in Walpole going 21 years now, uh, down at Bristol Square, and now I'm just on the other side of Napper Tandy, so I'm just on the outside of your, you know, downtown. Yeah. Um, you know, if you, I also feel that there's a lot of people in the community who would walk down as well if there was more light. Excuse Especially me one second. If, if everyone could mute uh, mute themselves and, until you've been recognized, thank you. Um, if there was more lighting, I think because people a lot of times will park at our shop. We close at five now, and we allow people to park there and walk downtown uh, because there is not a lot of parking. You know, as soon as the restaurants start um, opening up out, it takes outdoors. It takes up a lot of parking spaces. So. Um, you know, one of the issues I have with, you know, moving even closer to downtown is there's just not the available parking, the lighting, um, and it is difficult to get through the center of town. Um, a lot of the other things you talked about, um, but I did want to bring that up as well. And, and thanks for pointing that out, because the lighting is something that can be easy to forget about sometimes in the summer as the days are getting longer, but you know, not that long ago in the spring and certainly in the fall and just in general in the evening, having a well-lit, safe sidewalk to walk along, you know, safe, mm -hmm. separated from traffic, mm -hmm. and most importantly, you know, will encourage people to make that walk and to make those connections. So that's a, a very good point to make. And one more thing, the gentleman with the, the car um, audio on the corner, he actually rents that building um he does not own it but he we've we've talked to him on a, a regular basis as well if he had some assistance he might move elsewhere and make tds the old tds that's there vacant on the corner a restaurant might be interested in that now because they would have that whole corner to have um uh, door seating um, mm -hmm. that may be something that you could look at is to maybe help some businesses move to areas that might be a little bit better for them, but they just can't do it on their own. Mm -hmm. And as part of the, the tenant mix and uh, the customer base recommendations, we'll be looking at things like that to, you know, recruit, you know, certain types of retailers that'll help, you know, foster the type of environment downtown that will attract people. So that's, that's a great example and, and definitely interesting to hear. So thank you for sharing. Thank you. Okay, um, next question. How can we help businesses get the word out that they exist? Some don't have social media accounts and need help in that area. That is a, a great question as well and falls into that same category of you know, small business assistance. Um, part of this program, which I haven't talked too much about yet, um, is that there are uh, another set of consultants who are called subject matter experts uh, that will be able to request help from. And these are people who specialize in a, a very specific area, whether it's, you know, wayfinding or storefront design or, you know, online business platforms and, and marketing for small businesses, things like that. So we'll be able as part of this planning process to reach out to them, to talk to them about how we might put together, uh, you know, a program or, you know, a technical assistance you know, program or manual, something like that, that could be shared with businesses to help them, you know, get online, to help them with their marketing, things like that. So that is a great example of one of the types of recommendations that we might, you know, develop in the plan. And so it's, it's great to hear that 
you know, it sounds like there's a need for that, at least among some businesses. So um, that's, that's really helpful. And that is the sort of thing that we'll be looking for uh, as part of this process. We have time for uh, another question. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so uh, Jennifer writes, as a Walpole resident uh, who lives um, downtown, I feel that there's little to draw people downtown to spend any amount of significant time down there. Most people just simply drive or pass through. One of the goals of the recovery should be creating more community gathering spaces through thoughtful development and solicitation of appropriate businesses. Um, and then she notes addressing the lack of retail and restaurant spaces, such as a coffee shop, bookstore, bakery, restaurant, um, place where people can gather. Mm -hmm. um, and then also she said we should use town resources and local groups such as Walpole Rec, Town Library and other local groups to host more um, and regularly occurring activities to bring more people there. Totally Absolute, agree. Absolutely. Yes. And that's, you know, sort of tenant mix, um, you know, recruiting or retaining those types of businesses to downtown. Um, and it's also been looking at the, the physical space for having these events and, and where is that? How is it designed? How do you encourage those sorts of things? So that's a, that's a great point. Uh, Sarah, I think there are a couple people that have their hand raised. All right. Um... Uh, so I okay. see uh, Joanne as one of them. So Joanne, would you like to unmute yourself, please? Hi, Phil and Sarah. Thank you. Um, I asked the question about the social media because I'm with a group called Walpole Together, and we've been highlighting, spotlighting businesses also downtown, restaurants and non-restaurants. We hear a lot from the non-restaurants. They feel like people just don't know that they're around or that they don't get the help. Um, that restaurants do get, but it's tough because people aren't, a lot of them, sometimes they just don't understand how to use social media. And I just want to follow up on this because how can we make sure that they can get some help? Like some don't have a social media account at all. Some do an extremely great job at social media, but there's been so many places and I've lived here for a long time that I didn't even know existed. It's been wonderfully eye-opening and we don't just do the downtown. We do all of Walpole, but it, it's really interesting how there's a knitting, you know, group that's in the back of the downtown on um, the side kind of going towards Johnson Middle School. I had no idea that even existed. And even if you get like a place next to Farmer and Nadell, like Secret Haven, beautiful store but it's really tough I guess it's sometimes it's just a word of mouth and I think that having or reaching out to them somehow to say you know we'd like to help you I mean I tried to help some of them but sometimes they just you know they're busy and they just didn't have mm -hmm. a lot of time and that was I'm certainly not an expert in that field but it's it just was um very eye-opening to me to see how many businesses there were that were great, all wonderful business owners that, you know, wanted to be more recognized in the town, but they just didn't know how to really go about it. That's, that's an excellent point. And, and I think that that goes again to sort of technical resources, technical assistance, uh, you know, training either physical, you know, trainings in, in person or online trainings or a training, you know, resource manual that's available for that sort of thing. Um, so, you know, to hear it come up a couple of times tonight, I think is, is really useful for us as we're trying to identify some of the needs. Um, so, you know, thank you for sharing that. It is important that, you know, these local businesses, people in the community know they're there and, and are able to find them. So, um, you know, as we think about potential priorities and recommendations, it's, it's really helpful to hear. And then uh, James, I saw also had his hand raised, James Hi. Brady. Hi, how are Hi. you? Um, great presentation, by the way, uh, and um, kudos to you. And a couple of little, a couple of questions, but more of kind of a suggestion. I think one of the 
you know, um, is things that's important. I like the way you t- were talking about the signs and the facades and so forth. Um, it has to be made much more attractive for people to want to go to the downtown area. So site is obviously very important. And I'm just wondering um, if there's going to be some money built into whatever comes out of all this to help the businesses with getting signs and, and, you know, helping them kind of maybe something not exactly cookie cutter, but you know, uh, that, that I think would be important. The second thing is that I think we, what you should, should consider is do what they kind of do with Disney world. And that is they attract the, um, the smell and they also attract people's uh, senses by music. And I've talked about this in the past, I think uh, with wireless uh, radio and wireless communication now, it's quite easy to set up a system speakers throughout the downtown area and have music during the course of the day or even the evening hours. You could have seasonal music around the, the Christmas holiday season. You could have different types of music for different functions. You could also be, for if you're having a large um, gathering of people, you could use that for like a public address system if necessary. So I think music and also coupled with smell. If you know, if you went to Disney World, as you walk down Main Street, you start to get the odor of, for instance, chocolate chip cookies. And you know that there's a shop up the street that shows uh, chocolate chip cookies. So just some idea to kind of maybe put that into your plan. Um, I think it might be helpful to attract people to the downtown community. Those are, are great points that it's not just site, but it, it is some of those other things. And, and that's where, you know, restaurants that have the ability to open, you know, big windows when the weather is nice can help contribute to that. Um, you know, a mix of, of businesses where you do have you know, bakeries as well as restaurants can, can play into that. Um, uh, to your point about signage assistance and, you know, funding for that, um, the way that this program is is structured. So it's a planning grant program. Um, The report that we'll put together will have a series of kind of project profiles that explain the key details of them. And part of that will be potential funding sources, a timeline, you know, who's the responsible person or entity for kind of being the, carrying that project forward. Um, So at the end of this, what, what DHCD has you know, I, I think it is looking to do. They are getting all of this information from 120 communities across Massachusetts. They're able to look at that and to begin to see, you know, what are some of the areas that a lot of downtowns that have, have identified a need for, and then look at their, their current funding, their available funding, and see if they need to reallocate it, create new programs, things like that. Um, so if signage is something where a lot of communities are saying, hey, we need help with signage, um, that may be something that DHCD is able to kind of create a, a program or something for, um, or to direct, you know, people to other resources. So the, the funding side of it, you know, at the end of this process, um, the project profiles will identify potential funding sources. And then the next step after this is to, to go through that application process. Um, so we are coming up on eight. Um, I want to just have one last thing, which I also want to hear from you on. Um, and this is the set of priorities that I that we introduced at the beginning. Um, these are, you know, the six preliminary ones, and it touches on several things that we've heard um, from you over the last 15 or 20 minutes here, you know, training for online business sales, signage and facade improvements, Um, you know, wayfinding downtown. So as you take a look at these priorities, the the order is, you know, a little less important than are the right kind of topics on here. And so I'd be curious to see if there's anything else that people might suggest that we consider as a, a really important priority as we start to move into the project identification and project development phase. Um, go ahead, uh, flowers and more. Yes, I know there is a Walpole Chamber of Commerce. Um, I'm usually involved with some of the larger ones that cover more cities, but would there be something along those lines that could be worked into it? Because I know there's dues that are also associated with it, but I feel that if something was made 
maybe through the town where all businesses could be invited to participate without having to pay dues or fees that it might be used a little bit better if at all possible does that make sense sure yeah um I'll just, it, go ahead so, just so businesses can use each other. I try to use all the businesses in Walpole because we're all, most of, a lot of them are, you know, family owned businesses. So I try to keep my business, uh, you know, working with other businesses in the area. Uh, but sometimes the only way I know is if I go in and speak to them, but it might be great to have a better uh, a printout or a list or, you know, in every three months, there's a meeting or something along those lines where businesses could get together and share a little bit more. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. Uh, Pat, did you want to say anything? No, I, mean, I I completely agree with that, that idea. I mean, collaboration like that, um, you know, I think that's, that's essential to try to foster that type of community for sure. Okay, and uh, we have another question or comment from Shannon McCarthy. Hi, yes, I was wondering if, and this might fall under pedestrian improvements, but particularly just areas to sit and hang out in downtown. Um, there's really not a whole lot even within the the common space itself. Um, and I think there's been huge improvements with the addition of the new picnic tables. I've been so happy to see those, but I take my daughter to Irish dance class on Saturday mornings and I usually end up sitting on a bench facing the side of a building. And I just feel like there's, we can, we can do so much better, you know? Yes. Yeah, so, you know, places to sit are, it would definitely kind of fall under that general kind of pedestrian improvements, um, you know, shared community spaces where, where you can do that. It's, and then this again, kind of goes back to some of the physical constraints that downtown has relative to the width of the sidewalk and just physically where you could place more benches. Um, but there are other ways to address that. And so that's something that we'll definitely be considering because it is an important part of walking around downtown. You know, if you, you know, stop at a coffee shop or get an ice cream in the summer, you know, you want a place nearby to be able to sit down and people watch and, you know, just enjoy being downtown. Uh, and so that seating is definitely an important part of that. Uh, Jen, it looks like you have your hand up. Yeah, I just, I was in a me another meeting and a colleague brought up an important point when we talk about doing these things uh, to pedestrian access or places to hang out or putting more benches that making sure we're always mindful of accessibility issues. I just want to confirm that that's, you know, on everybody's mind and in mm -hmm. all those priorities. Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, the, the bare minimum function of any sidewalk or crosswalk in downtown is to make sure that everyone can safely and easily pass. And so that is curb ramps and, you know, having adequate width for accessibility. Um, so that's a, a, an excellent point and, and a really important um, you know, feature that would be included in any, you know, design consideration for sidewalks and spaces like that. And tables as well. Like we have uh, the tables downtown that, that have the uh, wheelchair accessible, mm -hmm. the new, the new tables. I don't see any other hands or questions right now. All right. We are coming up on eight o'clock, so I want to be mindful of people's time. Um, you know, I think just based on some of the points that people have made, either in the chat box or, or you know, uh, speaking them, you know, I think it, it seems like these are generally kind of the right priorities. And people have emphasized a couple of, of interesting points in terms of support for social media and online marketing for businesses, um, you know, funding for signage improvements and, and how that might happen and those different pedestrian improvements. So it's great to, to hear those and we really appreciate that. Um, I just wanna finish quickly 
um, just kind of in terms of what's next. So this is the schedule that we shared at the very beginning. Um, we are kind of transitioning from the first phase into the second phase. And what we'll be doing over the next uh, couple of months is to uh, you know, develop a list of initial project ideas, start to you know, put some detail to that, you know, identify you know, who are the people who are responsible, what are potential funding sources, what are some of the potential risks of trying to do this, this project. You know, there are some that will require partnerships with private property owners, and so we want to have a sense of whether there's support for that or not. So we'll start to develop that. We'll have an opportunity to talk with some of those subject matter experts for you know, areas where we feel that we, we need a little additional expertise. Uh, and then towards the end of the summer, we'll have the draft plan um, that we'll come back and share, again, those, those initial recommendations to test and, and make sure we you know, have the right ones in there, um, get any more thoughts, and then uh, you know, finalize things by the middle of September. These are you know, some of the areas where those subject matter experts will be available to us. Um, and so that's another great element of this grant program is that Walpole and these other communities you know, have access to these specialists who you know, all they do every day is think about you know, revenue and sales for small businesses or how to attract the right type of tenants to foster a really interesting downtown. You know, so we'll have an opportunity to, to talk with those type of experts and get their input to help develop you know, a really solid set of project recommendations. Uh, so that brings us to the end. And I just want to thank you all again for your time and for your participation, your ideas. We really appreciate it. Um, that was you know, very important for us to hear uh, from people to make sure we're we're on the right track, and you know to hear from your perspective, you know what's working well, where's room for improvement. Um, should you or anybody who's watching the recording of this have other questions or comments for us, you can uh, reach Sarah, Pat, or myself at these email addresses here. Um, and so we uh, just want to. I will close and say thank you very much. I'll turn it over to Sarah and Pat to. Uh, close us out. So thank you again for your time tonight. Okay, thanks. Yeah, and I just, uh, you know, also want to echo um, our thanks to everyone who's attended. And also just really emphasize that we do want to hear from you. Um, you know, if you're a resident or a business owner, or someone that, you know, comes downtown, we really value your opinion. And we, we um, you know, want to work together. And we want to to make a downtown that's going to work for all of us. So, so please, please do reach out um, if you have ideas, suggestions, questions. Um, I'd love to hear from you. Thank you. Pat? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I uh, echo Sarah's uh, statement and, and thank you, Phil, for, uh, for being able to present um, the presentation today. Uh, we're going to learn a lot of uh, great things from it and hopefully what we can take from it, we can uh, utilize going forward in the future. All right. Good night, everyone. Thank you very much. Have a, a great holiday weekend.